You could forget all that. And just have fun! Welcome everybody back to TwizCast. Uh, we are here to bring you all the news under the Blizzard Entertainment logo for games such as World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, Diablo, the very anticipated Overwatch, and much, much more. But who are we? Please allow me to make just a few introductions, if you don't mind. From the great state of North Dakota, you will soon find her and her rogue hanging out and enjoying the good life in the Dalaran sewers. The one girl who can make you walk into the apocalypse with a can-do attitude. Please help me welcome back to the show, the lovely and talented Red. Hello, dear. Hello, Twiz. You know, I'm from North Dakota, and I was wondering, did you know that there's actually a city called Can Do, North Dakota? Is it really? Yeah, there really is. Wow. Wow. How about that? The can, things you learn. Can you can you make it over there sometime? Uh, I'll try. Oh, the answer <laughs> is can, the answer is Can Do. <laughs> can Do. Can Do. <laughs> Uh, from the city that never sleeps direct from Las Vegas, Nevada, the man who picks up legendary items like Donald Trump picks up cans of hairspray. Please help me welcome back to the show the demon-slaying Diablo Master 5000, Mr. Archon the Wizard. Hello, buddy. It's huge. My inventory <laughs> is huge. That was good, dude. That, that was, was my good. impression of Jimmy Fallon doing an impression of Donald Trump. That was double impressions. Yeah. Off the There's top a car place. salesman around my place that, like, all the commercials are like, It's huge, Rochester! It's huge! <laughs> you just reminded me of that. <laughs> Do my best. It That's was, actually, that was the impression. It was stellar. <laughs> We're going to revisit that Donald Trump hairspray at some point in the show, so stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, last and certainly not least, the man that has enough empty beer bottles in his house to put every page of War and Peace in a separate bottle and send it across the ocean. It's the card-slinging Duchess of New York, the legendary Mr. Sexy Stutter. Welcome back for another week of beatings, my friend. <laughs> That's the beating I've been taking in Hearthstone this week. But ah. what makes North Dakota a great state? Um, Shots fired. Oh. Shots fired, yeah. Rub's got you nothing. know what? It's Rough Rider country. Like JFK, not JFK. Okay. <laughs> that was a huge fail. Uh, Roosevelt <laughs> rode around up here or something like that. <laughs> Teddy or FDR? You know what? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> I'm not a history buff. Or North, North Dakota. Just got taken one notch down if it was even possible. It's true. Right? It's true. <laughs> well, There's literally nothing to do up here. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I've flown over it. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, hello. My name is Twiz. It's very good to see you guys. You can find me on the Colterus US server on my Orc Shaman in Twisted Legion. Um, rocking some uh, some thrall, actually, in uh, Heroes of the Storm. Or throwing secrets all over in a pally deck that I've been playing for the past two weeks. I'm kind of changing my story on now. So um, you can follow us all on Twitter if you'd like. At TwizBP, at TankThatReb, at Archon the Rizm Rizzard. We are here. Archon the Wizard. Uh, words are hard these days. Uh, and Sexy Stutter BP. And if you want to email us, guys, you can easily hit us up. Podcast at blizzpro.com. That email goes directly into my inbox, onto my phone. I get it instantly. So, uh, first things first, everybody. You can get this show in a couple of different ways. The audio is available on iTunes, where five-star reviews are absolutely, unbelievably appreciated. Uh, and the video is on the BlizzPro YouTube channel. So, um, all of the... the uh, the, the games that we're showing, the, the deck lists, the walkthroughs, the heroes breakdowns and stuff like that, that's all available on the BlizzPro YouTube channel and it, it goes up right after I get done recording this so you guys can check that out and watch it uh, if you want on the backside. Uh, also, if you guys want to hang out with us live, uh, you can check us out on uh, Monday nights, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, Eastern or 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on twitch.tv slash blizzpro. So, uh, enough with the not-so-witty banter, everybody. Let's dive right into the good stuff because we have... A lot to cover this week, and a whole bunch of things to talk about. Time is limited, so let's let's knock it out of the park. Let's talk about our week in gaming. Reb, what have you been up to? What's going on? Well, I'll tell you what, Twiz. I have been busier than a one-armed wallpaper hanger. Um, I've been in all the games. 
Okay. All but one. All but one. Okay. <laughs> I think we know which one that is. Yeah. Uh, let's start with uh, talking about some heroes. I am having a blast in heroes right now. It is so much fun. I get on these huge binge fest of where I sit down and it's just it sucks me in for hours and hours and hours and I told myself okay this is the last one but I'm on a win streak we gotta keep going one more okay but this is my last one but I really kicked butt that last time I have to continue I have to knock out this quest and it's one of those things that I've just been consuming without any mm-hmm. sort of inhibitions Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the i mean my my level since i'm not level 40 yet is obviously very happy that i'm doing that Mm -hmm. um and i hope to continue doing that but i tell you what i either get on these win streaks that are just like kicking butt and raffle stomping the entire time or i get on these losing streaks and i feel so bad for anybody (laughs) that groups with me on those nights because it's just it's it's one of the i've been there we all we've all been there you are not you are not alone I tell myself, I'm like, you know what, on those nights where we are raffle stomping the other team, that team is having a a really bad night where they're the ones getting their butts handed to them. And sometimes I have to alleviate that and be the ones to to step into their place and and take that beating. So I understand. Um, In other news, I have been continuing to level in world of warcraft and mm-hmm. i am continuing continuing this community challenge for leveling all 11 classes <clears throat> to max level uh, i'm still stuck at seven i get didn't get another one this past week nah. but i started playing a monk and daggum it if twiz wouldn't be so proud i'm leveling as brewmaster and it is a blast awesome awesome i'm I'm honestly wondering why you didn't force me to do this in the past because it's just it, it's because something as, that as soon as you went alliance i gave up on you <laughs> I was like, okay, this girl can't learn anything, so I'm bailing. Wait, I'm out. Red One Alliance? When did this happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy, you got some catching up to right. do. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> okay, come to the light side, I guess. Yeah. The, the golden blue. It was Anduin. He brought me to the, the golden blue. The boring side. Mm-hmm. Shh. I know yeah. he didn't. Yep. <laughs> it's nice. Um, hey, you know what? It's nice because not only does your tank have a weapon and a shield, they also have a purse. So... <laughs> That's right. Lovely. That's right. That's right. Um, but no, I love I just dropped it. You just dropped it. Mm-hmm. You're you're getting happy with them buttons tonight. I am. I double tap that. <laughs> I love playing Brewmaster though because it's it's very different than the other tanks that I've played in the past, and I love how you really have no issue with aggro at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably less than level fifty right now, so I mean I'm not in the higher levels, but it's still just. Uh, aggro is, is no issue at all and lastly this may surprise some but i've been playing diablo 3 what yeah Left that's right, right up the down. button that was the that was the big reveal i think oh okay apparently, all right <laughs> apparently it is, uh, so that's yeah that's what it's for <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's but yeah, I, I finally got a level 70 seasonal character so that I could get them out in Heroes, let's be honest. But uh, while, I, <laughs> while I was doing it, I was like, you know what, I'm going to work on these objectives while I'm still in game. And I got some help from the Blizz Pro clan, and they were kind of giving me some guidance on what I should do, how I should do them, and whatnot. You're getting some hate for that Inception button right now. Oh, well. Tell you what. Um, but it gets your I'll tell attention you one thing, is what it does. Um, it does. I'll tell you one thing um, about Diablo that is really confusing me is this Dagum Kunai's Cube. I, I'm having issues with it, and I'm going to have to consult our expert here on Twizzcast mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. But before I consult on that, um, I want to know how the leaderboards were treating you, Archon. What's going on with that? You know what? I, Me and the leaderboards aren't on good terms right now. <laughs> we, uh... We're not talking so much anymore. I, I, I make a, a big push towards the beginning of the season usually, and then, and then I just hang out because I can't, I can't keep up with the big dogs anymore on Dablo. So actually, I, <laughs> I haven't looked at the leaderboard in, in over a week right now, and I'm, I'm okay with it. So I'm you don't know. know. You could be you like... a little I, bit of withdrawal? Like you could be at the shaking, top and not even you know. know. Just, I, I got, <laughs> I got my, my leaderboard pop that I suck on to keep it from being too intense. But It's, it's like nicotine gum, but yeah. different. <laughs> oh my gosh. A leaderboard pop. It's uh, keeping me strong. So, But Diablo's fun, treating you good. 
Oh, sorry. I thought yeah. you were talking to Reb. No, no, um, no. 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 That, yeah, what a ridiculous question to ask Reb. We know that she's only doing it just to get her wow mount, right? Yeah. Uh, right. No, yeah, Diablo's fun. Uh, sorry. Um, Diablo, I stream some on Friday, and I've been collecting uh, Rift Keys. Yep. And it gets, like, super <laughs> addicting when you start getting, like, a nice stack of Rift Keys. I don't know if anyone else has had this issue, but once I got to, like, 40 Rift Keys, I was I just, like, I don't want to spend these anymore. I want to see how high I can make that number go. <laughs> For no good reason. No reason. At all. Yeah. So I was streaming on um, Friday, which was a really interesting day to stream. I don't know if anyone was on Twitch on Friday, but it, it was September 11th. Yeah. And that's an interesting day just to be on the internet in general. For sure. Is the day that everyone's talking about 9-11. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, jet fuel cannot yeah. melt steel. <laughs> I learned so much about jet fuel on Friday. Let me tell you guys. Did you know this whole thing was just a huge conspiracy? I had never heard this before. Turns out it was all our government. No, I don't, I don't know. I have no opinion oh. on the matter. But it was very entertaining and probably a big turnoff to anyone coming by my stream because that's... We were playing Diablo, but that was just like a decoy because the talk was like nothing but 9-11. And, and normally I'm the one that brings up the topics that no one cares to hear about, but this time it was the entire internet. That's all they wanted to talk about. Have, you guys have seen the memes, I imagine. Were you on the internet on Friday? <clears throat> um, I was not. Not I mean, really. Not very much. That video's been out for a while. No, no yeah, yeah. entire thing, and it's like, man. Like, I remember that from high school. Yeah, yeah. The, the 90s kids remember that from high school. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember yeah. this. I'm a 90s kid. I don't remember that. I remember I had an ex-girlfriend who brought it up to me. We were dating at the time, and I'm pretty sure that was an integral part on the ending of it. I was like, <laughs> why are you bringing this up to me? Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Hmm. Yeah, I really didn't mean to bring the 9-11 drama into TwizCast. I apologize for that, and I apologize, Twiz, to any uh, comments or emails you get in, in relation to that. Uh, Diablo-wise, it's been going great. I've officially entered casual phase. I'm, I, like I said, I'm done with the leaderboards, and I'm just all about having fun, chilling with chat. So I'm streaming uh, every Friday, like midday over here, and... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Nothing to report, really. Um, there's, of course, all this drama going on Diablo about an exploit that I'm going to talk about later. Ooh, but, the plot uh, thickens. Yeah, but but my weekend gaming was was just rifting over and over again, and and that is not fun to talk about. So, what about <laughs> you, Stutter? Any excited things happening? And I've just been cranking out Heroes of the Storm, and uh, I played some laser tag, which is like a video game. Yeah, yeah. you actually played yeah, drunk laser tag. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had a bar there. Glorious idea. Wow. Yeah. I got way too into it then. I got, like, soaking. Like, I was sweating up a storm. Wait, can you go to this bar, like, mid-match? Like, you're, like, ducking behind the bar, getting a quick drink, <laughs> get no. and getting right back out in the field? But I like that idea even better. <laughs> we should start a, a laser tag arena. I can just imagine Stutter just rolling on the floor very slowly and not in any way trying to conceal himself but thinking that he <laughs> I don't know why that's what I picture Well, I tried to pistol this. whip somebody but apparently that was a problem <laughs> just kidding I did not try to do that guys <laughs> I did not try it anyways on the third note I also played a lot of Hearthstone um I played I've been playing Dragon Priest for a little while because dragons are fun and Priest I like it's just been, you know, I've been They're everywhere. Dude, Dragon little, Priest like, is everywhere. Playing Diablo, like casual, not really trying to rank up, but like just playing decks I enjoy. You yeah. know, Dragon Grinding Priest. It. Dragon Priest is everywhere, dude. It's tough to get it's around. So fun though. I don't know. <laughs> playing dragons is just a lot of fun. Like, I don't know, it's just like dragons, man. It's just okay. dragons. It's okay. dragons, man. It's, I mean, he's he's Khaleesi up in here. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Oh God! Well, That's cool. the only statement I need. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Stutter Khaleesi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, also, me and Twist play a little bit of Hots. You we can did? tell him about that. When did I want to hear Twist tell oh, me about yeah. this playing oh, Hots. Well, yeah. You know what? Well, I mean, it, yeah. I played. Uh, I played Thrall. We. You. You seem like really excited about that. Like I, I should remember. Okay. Um. We played on. We, we never played video Friday games night? in regular. I feel lonely. It was Friday night, right? That we played? Yeah. 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 
Now I remember because I had no social life Friday. And Twiz was a little overserved that night. So Thanks. anything <laughs> could have happened. So why like don't you story. tell everybody the good news of what happened when we played together? Because I'm really drawing a blank here. <laughs> Do you not remember? I mean, I played a bunch of Heroes it of the It wasn't Storm that Friday thrilling. Night. I just oh. played Nova and we just We just we dominated won both games. Yeah, we played uh Zextros actually played with us and he was he was Chen, right? And you were Thrall. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was Nova and I was uh someone else that I forgot about. Yeah. Well I uh, I, 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 I did play uh yeah, I did yeah. play Thrall. I played but we Thrall. never play video games anymore. I, I'm here together. to tell you, Drunk Thrall is the best Thrall. I think we should just add like a permanent segment where you guys try to recollect what happened one night when you both got really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that that segment would probably be more frequent than it should be. Yeah. <laughs> it was during the second half of the match. Twiz just kept spamming chat with letters because he was trying to wipe the puke off of his keyboard. <laughs> God. Gosh. So gross. So, anyways, <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, I did play, uh, I did play some Thrall, which I found out, you know what, Thrall is really, really good end game tune. Like he's he's good, he's good in the beginning as far as pushing lanes. He gets his weak spot, you know, as as everybody else is leveling up. He, you know, pretty much from like seven to ten, he's kind of take it or leave it. But once you hit like the higher level, sixteen ish, sixteen to twenty and higher, um, he's he's kind of a monster. So. Um, it was good. It was good to get back in the old thrall game, and um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy about that. Um, I did play Rexar last week on the uh, the Heroes Power Hour that I do every Tuesday nights. Um, he's a little underwhelming, and um, here is the trick, guys. And this is what I this is what I saw. This is what I continue to see when I'm watching Twitch streams and stuff like that. Kill Rexar. Don't kill Misha. Kill Rexar. Because Rexar yeah. is super squishy, and Rexar is, I mean, depending on the build and everything like that, but but Misha is going to be the pain in the hind end. But if you can get Rexar, you automatically just care, took care of Misha. So, and Rexar is super squishy. So, that is the secret. So, stop I mean, trying to kill them. don't you, like, just walk past Misha? Like, just literally walk past her. Yeah. 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 That is the secret, part. though. That is the secret. Um, let's see here. I'm kind of I'm at a loss as to what to play on the uh, on the, the ladder in Hearthstone. Like I, I played the Secrets Pally again, and I just got really underwhelmed. I tried a couple of different Control Warriors, and that just didn't do the trick. Um, I yeah, but I played Control Warrior versus Dragon Priest, so that's probably not a great matchup, anyways. Um, I played it like four in a row, and I got my butt handed to me three out of four times. So. I'm kind of like, eh, eh, I don't even know what to play anymore. So I'm going to experiment maybe with a rogue deck or whatever. We've got a really, really cool mage deck coming up later on in the in the show, guys. So stick around for that. Um, I'm seeing a couple of different variations of the of the old aggro pally. Um, it seems like um, like the, the standard tried and true list that I use for the, the secrets pally. I mean, it does have abusive sergeants and stuff like that. But it's based on having a board... And then when you play that six drop that puts all the secrets out for you, um, you have to have a board in order for that to be effective because on their turn they attack um, either you or one of your minions. Um, Noble Sacrifice kicks in it, and um, that dies. It buffs another minion with Avenge. Um, Redemption comes back and you get the 2-1 back uh, that just got killed. Um, and so you've just got like a buffed board right there. And so I'm. it's like it's it's... It, it works so well, but I'm starting to see like uh, people putting Truce Over Champions, Dr. Boom Tyrions, and stuff like that, but still have the same kind of, I don't know if you would call it a mid-range or what. Um, but I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of it. Um, but you know what, Archon, you'll be very happy, dude. I, I played Diablo all Saturday. I'm so proud of you. I did. I know all about the Nephiflems. And the the um, was, I'm really impressed with that pronunciation. It is. It, it's, yeah, true. It's, it's true. It's true. The um, Tyrones. The, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. I, they, we should have another segment of just like people trying to pronounce words. Like, <laughs> like what was the word I was trying to pronounce? It was uh, Exodus? chamomile. Exodar. <laughs> or Exodus. I know you screwed the pooch on that one too. Oh yeah. No, it, <laughs> Exodus it or something. Cam- it Is it Lord Time like with Reb yet? Oh God, Lord <laughs> Time with Reb. Um, no, I, I, I am all about pronunciation. I mean, I mean mispronunciation because I don't really care that much about getting it right. And I made a video about 
Gom or Gom. I still don't know sure. which one's right, but I said it wrong, and the comment that I got that made me laugh the most on that YouTube video was, Who's Gom? Stupid American, <laughs> and I don't I don't know what it has to do with me being American, but I I thought it was hilarious. Oh. I'm sure it does. I'm sure. I'm sure it's yeah. Something yeah. I yeah I but I getting back I do feel better I do feel better about um knowing a little bit more about how Diablo is functioning now and stuff like that. So if I'm right, basically you like you jump into the rift, you kill everything, and then you go back and you salvage everything and you like build your gems and then you do it again but with a greater risk yeah that forever okay (laughs) just (laughs) Just making sure i didn't miss out never stop if you stop you're doing it wrong yeah well i want to give a a big shout out to at review dad media um because he and i i was like let's get together in diablo and do something stupid and he's like cool all right so i was like dude i really don't i don't even remember hardly how to play this game i'm you know i have a monk that is um paragon 50 that I don't know anything about. So I noticed that, like, I don't know if it was a gearing thing, because I was getting gear all night, but, like, my monk just wasn't doing any damage. And I was only on, like, Torment 4 or 5. Wow, and, you already have Torment 4 or 5? And Honestly, do, don't, don't feel like you should be pushing yourself on the Torments. Like, you should be cruising through, easy peasy, everything dying really quick. That's the most efficient way to play. Sure. Well, but at the same time, it's like I'm getting gear that's not exactly an upgrade either. Yeah, but the gear won't get better when you go up in Torments. You'll just get more of it. But you'll get it faster if you're farming efficiently. And farming efficiently usually means everything's dying really easy. Well, not... he was he was on his barbarian, so I mean, he we were we were cruising through him pretty well. But it was like I remember at one point in time there was like just one little mob that was chasing me down, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna kill this thing. And it's like I'm not doing any damage to this. It was like a little white mob, right? Yeah, yeah. Like not, like not even a rare or anything like that. That happened to me as well when I was getting power level, and I was like, "Heck yeah, I'm like level 67. I got yep. this." Yeah, I think Reb said it right. Six. You you weren't farming <laughs> twins. You were getting power level. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's and hey, true. nothing wrong with that. Everyone's got to get carried for a little bit. Yeah. But honestly, well, like the, the the builds in Diablo, they all multiply each other. So if you don't have, you know, at least a four piece or a six piece set, then you're just doing no damage. As soon as you get that six piece set, your damage is gonna shoot up. Okay, two times, and that's just times. it. I'm I think I'm sitting at either two or three pieces. So yeah, it's all yeah. about sets right now. They're they're changing that thankfully, uh, or at least there's Wyatt Chang hinted that you're not gonna be relying on sets so much in the future. But right now, it's all about getting that six piece. Okay. Well, I'll keep going because I was like, maybe I'm just not understanding this. And he was playing a barbarian, and I was like, I want to do what you're doing. So I started over, and um, they power leveled me. Um, I started the <laughs> I started the game at um, what is it? Torment like eight six? or no six? When you start six, it, when yeah. you start, yeah, six. Yeah. And. Um, they were like, dude, we're like one shotting mobs and stuff. Like, how is this happening? Um, and it was because I started the game. So they were like ultra low mobs, like ultra low health and stuff. And they were just going through and cleaning house, but I was still getting stupid XP. Yeah, so, that's the way to do it. Yeah. That's, that's how people power level. So probably yeah, but, again. I mean, barbs and monks, barbs are technically the best right now. Monks are right up there with them. Um, monks are probably more useful in a group but barbs are definitely uh doing the best solo wise well that is the way i wanted to go and that's the way so i've got a barbarian now that i got to try and learn a little bit about but i mean i'm I'm excited i'm excited because i've not i i've never had like a bunch of max level diablo heroes that i could just go and farm gear with and screw around with and you know whatever so i think i'm at paragon one Something or other. One twenty. Keep your paragon. Paragon one. Oh, one oh, so, oh, like one hundred. Yeah, I, I was like, trying to think. One something. I'm like, no, what? No. <laughs> makes sense. no, 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 uh, no. Yeah, well, the nice thing about barbarians too is they're one of the only classes that actually has like three or four viable builds. You don't have sure. to just like do the one. But do you know what you're doing? Are you gonna be being, being like a whirlwind barb or a yeah, the yeah, barb? probably a whirlwind. Yeah, because that was the build that he was using when he was power leveling me. So that's gonna be yeah, that'll be that. So nice. Um. Okay, everybody. Let's. You know what? Uh, very cool. Um, uh, let's get into. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of the show. Let's. Uh, let's get into the news here. This, this is Matt Yang King from World of Warcraft and the creator of the World of Steam, and you're listening to Twizcast. 
What do you think? I like turtles. All right. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up. To me, it looks like a leprechaun to me. The news. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, the Blizz Pro News is brought to you by our Patreon page, and this week's awesome supporters are Chris B, Smurf, Albert, Douglas Hopkins, Dennis Takuno, and Adam Brown. Guys, thank you seriously so much for what you guys are doing uh, in supporting this show and keeping this going and everything like that. Let me tell you what these guys, uh, what these, what these supporters uh, are doing. Um, by supporting Twizcast on Patreon, you are entering yourself into a way to put a chunk of cash back into your pocket. When we reach five hundred dollars in pledges every other month, we're going to be giving that money back to a random Patreon. At a thousand dollars, we're going to do the same thing. So, if you want a chance at putting a bunch of cash into your pocket, supporting Twizcast is a great way to make that happen. Head over to Patreon.com/twizcast, and for every five dollars you pledge, your name goes in for the drawing once. The bigger the pledge the better your chances are to win. So uh, we have you guys in mind all, at all times, and this is just one way that we try and give back. So uh, frankly, you deserve it. I can't I can't say more than that. So um, patreon.com definitely keeps the uh, keeps the show going. And uh, I mean, seriously, who doesn't want a chance of putting 500 or $1,000 in their pocket just for supporting a show that they, they like? So um, let's talk about uh, some World of Warcraft news. Guys, I wish there was a little bit more on the Warcraft home front to talk about. But other than some hot fixes, there wasn't much breaking game information this week. Uh, the only thing that really surfaced anywhere was a Gamescom developer interview that uh, Game Reactor did. Uh, there's actually some good discussion points worth talking about for that interview. So let's uh, let's touch on just a few of those, Reb. Yeah, sure. So first off, um, they noted that once the team had settled on the concept of Legion, they couldn't think of a better time to add Demon Hunters, which obviously it'll go hand in hand. Uh, Demon Hunters is something that the community has been requesting ever since they thought they saw it on the uh, artwork of the of Vanilla's box. Mm. Um, but it, it's something that was never really confirmed. We didn't really hold out our, our high hopes that we were going to have that delivered to us. So it's actually one of the things that they surprised us surprised us on and uh the community is pretty happy about it good they should be yeah um obviously um we know that the the team has an idea for expansions obviously while they're working on previous expansions it's just how things have to line up so we really don't know exactly how long they've known that they were going to put in Demon Hunters, mm -hmm. but we're very glad that they did. So uh, that leads me to my next point. Uh, Legion has been worked on for over a year before the announcement. So it's obviously, I would venture to say, they're probably being a little bit conservative with that as well. Um, with all of the artwork that has to be utilized and put in, all of the graphics, um, even though they may not be working on exactly boss mechanics or a raid encounter they had to get some sort of format for the map and i think that's what a lot of people don't realize is there's so much detail in the world of warcraft mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, it does take an extended amount of time so they have designated these art teams to take over on that uh the next point being the idea for legion is several years old the team was planning out several expansions and trying to decide the order of legion and warlords of draenor back in 2012. Wow. So, yeah, we're seeing three years ago that they were debating how the storyline would play out. And if you are a longtime listener of Twistcast, um, you may remember a ghost crawler interview that myself and Twiz... I don't know if Archon was there or not. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, we interviewed ghost crawler, and he actually alluded to this very fact that, you know, they know the general direction of the the storyline they may not have specifics in place again they may not have in bosses or anything like that but they have a a really good idea of the direction and they know what they're going to follow it up with so um the the fact that three years ago they were debating okay which one makes more logically to go first warlords of draenor or legion um just shows kind of their thought process also, they wanted to note that there are already two zones in production at last year's GamesCon. So once again, there's a lot of details to put into these zones. We really need to appreciate the artist and uh, those who are putting the content together. We need to appreciate them a little bit more because mm -hmm. they work on this night and day, I, I, I tell you. Uh, the next point, the team is already well in process on the expansion after Legion. 
So this kind of raises a red flag. Um, I was kind of anticipating Legion to be maybe the last expansion for Warlords or for um, World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Now, my reasoning behind thinking that Legion was going to be the end of an era, essentially, is because we're already more than a decade into the game um, and anticipating that they would have some sort of replacement, maybe a WoW 2, essentially, mm -hmm. to come in and, and take over, have a different gameplay style. It wasn't unreasonable to me to think that after a decade they would go ahead and change that. And also, they had changed how you buy game tokens. You cannot purchase, at this time, you cannot purchase more than, I believe it's two or three years worth of tokens in like a one year time span or something like that. Right. So it kind of it raised a red flag to me saying that we may not have a World of Warcraft after two or three years. So if Legion is the last expansion, this is not going to be a huge surprise to me. So that the fact that they're saying we know the expansion after Legion, it's like, oh, okay, I might put in another 10 years. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that they're deciding expansions in that way. I, I think, I mean... I love Blizzard, but they are a business still. And I, I think mm -hmm. bottom line is if people are going to pay the monthly fee for a World of Warcraft, they're going to keep making expansions. I, th I think like making a World of Warcraft 2 might make sense if there were some significant problems with the game or if they think they could do it better. But when they're making, when they're doing that as well as they are, and of course they're doing that well because you know they know how to keep the game alive, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just... It's the safe bet, and they know that if they make more expansions, people are going to buy them. People are going to play them. I don't think I don't think they have any plans on slowing down as long as they're you know remaining the number one MMO. Right. The, well, yeah. it, the paid MMO they're not going to make they're not going to make a World of Warcraft. They're not going to make a WoW two. They're not going to do that because if they made a WoW two, um, it's going to completely break the entire community. It's going to break everything because it's going to be people are like, no, I liked the old WoW or I now I play the new WoW. I mean, you already see a break in community when they introduce new games. You know, I mean, number subscription numbers go down, but Blizzard fans are still retained because they're now playing Reaper Souls. They're now playing uh, Heroes of the Storm, stuff like that. If they made a WoW 2 or something like that, it would put a dividing line right down the middle of the community. They're not they're never going to do that, guys. It's never going to happen. I, I, I call it right here. I, you know, there are some things that I said would never happen in WoW that have, you know, showed up right in my face. And I'll get it. I can get into that in another time. But it would not surprise me if they eventually phased out World of Warcraft and introduced something similar. I mean, if you look at the Sims franchise, for them to introduce not only The Sims 1 and Sims 2, but 3 and 4 and then different variations, it's just... It's a model that wouldn't surprise me, is all I'm saying. And and I thought I was reading certain cues for them that they were reaching the end of an era. But <clears throat> obviously, I read it wrong. We're going to have a few more expansions coming up. No. So lastly, the team needs to give players a reason to keep playing the content that they enjoy, as well as giving them more to do. Now, I know that Twiz kind of had the idea that if Garrison and Shipyard Grinding uh, are, are part of the more to do idea or what about the um the daily faction grinds and miss a pandaria and yeah that's that's kind of the thinking of of blizzard and what we've seen a lot of outcry and i would say the past two three years or so of the game is that uh players and developers are currently kind of at it like a little bit of a disconnect there are some members of the player base who really enjoy the the content that we're getting and the features and it's great and wonderful and that's a great connect but there are certain disconnects where um, the information is not flowing both ways I don't think so it's not a real good understanding of exactly what we want and when there's a huge outcry it's a huge pendulum swing to the opposite direction so it's really about working out what is what is the driving factor behind wanting to continue playing and just kind of figuring out, you know, what is that more to enjoy? To some players, it is going to be a reputation grind. Uh, to some player, it is, players, it is going to be doing garrison missions, things like that. And I think that when they released Tanan Jungle in 6.2, um, I think that really displayed that 
they gave us a lot of things to enjoy and and um, kind of play to different player bases. And you have pet battlers, you have questers, you have collectors of items, you have reputations, you have all of these different things that you could do. And ultimately, I think that they're getting back to the core where they're really understanding that they have a large player base who differs in opinions. Sure. Yeah. I definitely agree. I think we talked about it a little bit last week, but I love that they're adding more things to do. I just hope that they also stop incentivizing players to do everything. Yeah. Because most players, I, at least in my opinion, very small sample size, of course, most players don't enjoy doing everything there is to do in WoW and would rather focus on like the one to three things they really like. And like Twizzed mentioned last time, that there was a time where you could just do dungeons if you wanted to. You could just do PvP and yep. you didn't feel like you were hurting your efficiency by doing that. Right. And that, that that would definitely bring me back to WoW if they went yeah. that route. Well, and and again, it's it's what do you want? What it, it all hinges on? What do you? What is? The basics are this: when Mr. Pandaria came out with the uh, with the dailies grind, and now you've got your garrison to build up and shipyard and all that stuff. It's like you need you need a it, 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 WoW is, has become a full time job. Just to stay, just to stay, not you know, not competitive, but up to speed with everything, so that way when they release new content, it is new content for you. But when they release new content, and you have not gone through the old content because it's too much of a grind, it's too much of a full time job, then yeah. that that discourages. It's like, okay, well, there's a WoW patch that a whole bunch of people that live in this game get to enjoy, but because I have a job and two kids and whatever, you know, I. I'm. I might get to see this stuff and have it be really cool and new, in a month and a half from now when everybody else is. You know, like I'm not gonna have anybody to do quests with or anything like that because I'm just not as far as they are because I didn't sit there and grind it out. I, it, so when it comes to things to do, and I use big air quotes with that, they just got to be so careful with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I definitely again, agree with you. Like, I'm the filthy casual. With me. Oh, sorry. I'm the filthy casual is all I'm saying. You know, <laughs> but I hate to tell you. I mean. The, for all the There's hardcore people out there, being a little bit dirty is fun. <laughs> for all the for all the people out there that are hardcore, I'm here to tell you. I think there's a large percentage of player base that are filthy casuals. I think we kind of own yeah. the market. So. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the hardcores play more, so they're more prevalent. But I think there's definitely more casuals. And I can say I was in that boat too. I used to be hardcore, but in Warlords of uh, Draenor, I just wanted to be able to log in for one or two hours. But I felt like if I wanted to be efficient, I had to do garrisons for those one or two hours instead of what I wanted to do. And and that's really what led me to stopping in in Warlords, is I just I didn't feel like doing garrisons every day, but I didn't yeah. want to you know do something that wasn't efficient. Yep. Right. Yep. And I get that. I understand that on multiple levels. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Well, uh, as with everything, guys, we try and bring you a new add-on, a new build, a new something every week. Um, and uh, sometimes there's stuff and sometimes there's not or whatever. But uh, Reb has something for us this week that kind of puts a little a little sparkle back in the game. What do you got, Reb? Yes, I have a new add-on for us this week. And I will tell you, I was so excited about talking about this this week. And then actually one of my friends, Battle Panda, he actually uh, mentioned the add-on and was like, hey, you might want to talk about this. It's really cool. And I was like, you know what? That works out perfectly um, to know that someone else is enjoying this just like I do. And the add-on is called Storyline. And it is actually something that maybe more of the the lore buffs might enjoy. This may be only a certain sect of players who really, really gobble this up. But I tell you what, it is so much fun. If you go and accept a quest or even just begin uh, uh, speaking with a quest giver, you're going to see text start scrolling onto your screen. And it's a very interactive process where you can see, obviously, the quest giver. You can see yourself. And the way that it uh, scrolls through the text is, it's kind of like it's telling a story for you. It's a more immersive experience that a lot of other MMOs kind of have something very similar to this. And it's rather than just reading one blank page, it's telling a story for you. And then you have the option to accept your objectives after you find out exactly what they're getting to. And I'll tell you what, after playing with this for maybe 20 or less uh, quests, it was so much fun. I tell you, I got so much more out of the story and kind of understanding. I used it in a starting zone for Night Elves. And I tell you what, this whole time, just reading one huge paragraph of text, 
I found that I was pulling out my objective and what mm -hmm. exactly I want to do with it. Whereas with this, I'm more so seeing the story and what is it that is going to progress me in the story? Why am I doing something? Okay, that's what my objective is. Um, and it, what's a real another really cool feature about it is when you um, accept for a reward, it will usually recommend the reward that is more suited for you. So if you're a clothy and it's a cloth upgrade, it'll recommend that so you know to go ahead and select that icon um, when you're finishing things up. That's really cool. Reb, can I tell you my favorite part about this add-on? Yeah. It's watching Twiz talk to a sign. I yeah. think that was the... That's, it's, yeah, it's, I, it's, I noticed that. I hadn't tried that yet, so that was pretty cool. So, yeah, okay. So I click on I click on this, uh, and her name is Zira Dormy. Her name is right here at the bottom of the screen. It says, a pleasure. It's, it's got a picture of my, of my tune. Oh, and I can move it around. That's pretty super sweet. Uh, yeah. It says, a pleasure, priest, and I click continue, and Zero Dormy smiles, and I get all weirded out. And then she says, <laughs> it was kind of you to arrive so quickly. For reasons unknown to me, my master seeks audience with you. I would counsel you not take this invitation lightly. It's and it, it keeps scrolling on and um, check objectives. So uh, basically, as you keep scrolling through this, it says, it basically gives you the, yes, I'm going to do this, or, you know, or no, I'm... Yeah, I'm I not. Mind. So you would click the green check mark. Yes, I accept. Um, the one it's, thing I do notice, though, is that it does not tell you what your um, it doesn't tell you what your uh, uh, quest reward is. It doesn't tell you if you get gold, XP, or no. gear or anything like that. So not immediately, no. So that's something that you'd have to check in your quest log. Um, but what I find really cool about that is it does break up the chunks and it'll give you just a few sentences at a time, and then it makes it more so like a conversation rather than just. Here's a wall of text. Try to get through it. Um, and if you do get lost at any point, you're like, wait, what? You're you're going a little bit too fast. What what did you say last time? There is a rewind button so that you can go back in the text and uh, take a look at that. There's also a feature to make your text scroll faster, scrolls slower if you're an insanely slow reader um, and you just want to do it like that. <laughs> Read it one letter at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to uh, Chief Vulgen right now, and Chief Vulgen is in the chat room. How epic oh, is that's that? awesome. Chat awesome. option. <laughs> yeah. I saw him. He was like, look at that sexy troll on the left side of the screen. And I was like, I'm going to go talk to him. So. But yeah, with with my add-ons of the week, it may only be a certain sect of players who really enjoy it. You may be a role player who wants darker nights. You may be an auction house junkie who would like an easy way to um, prospect your or you may be a lore buff and you want to do this challenge where you go through and you read every single quest in game. I know this add-on kind of makes me want to do that. I don't know. That may be the, my next challenge. <laughs> it's interesting. It's going to turn your level grind into a lot longer though. But if you're True. if you it really want to you immerse yourself this is the way to do it yeah it's very immersive and i i do really like it just for that factor huh. well cool thank you for that reb uh if you guys have any questions this is going to be on the blizzpro.com when you when the uh when the show goes up um all the links and everything like that you go to blizzpro.com you look for the twizcast episode three i think we're going to try i think we're going to name this um um drunk thrall is the best thrall <laughs> i think i like that a lot um, but if you look for that episode three, um, you'll see the links to this curse add-on and everything like that. It's 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 actually it's pretty cool. It does it adds it adds flair to your questing. There's no doubt about it. So, um, <clears throat> well, very cool, very cool. And thank you, Battle Panda, for recommending that and Reb endorsing it. So let's talk a little bit about Diablo three. Not a heck of a lot, but there was one kind of really big thing that happened this week in the in the Diablo community. What's going on, Archon? Exploits. Exploit. Ex exploits are going on. Exploits, sir. So everyone get in there and take it. No, don't do exploits. We're going to talk a little bit because we decided maybe we'd make this more of a discussion because I want to get Stutter and Reb and Twiz's opinions on this. But first, we need a little backstory. So if you guys play Diablo, you know all about this exploit. And normally, I wouldn't talk about exploits um, and the specifics of them because I don't want to come across as if I'm like incentivizing people or explaining to people how to do exploits but blizzard just put out a blue post about this exploit particularly they are fixing it and um and they're punishing people who took advantage of it which i think is is the right thing to do because inevitably of course bugs are going to get in the code mm -hmm. exploits are completely inevitable and so i think players have to take some responsibility to not take advantage of them to keep it fair for everyone else in the game. So this particular exploit, um, one of many, just like uh, 
well, you know, it's just natural, especially in a big game like Diablo. You're going to get exploits. You get a, you get one every couple months <laughs> or so. And this one manifested in the Hellfire amulet mm-hmm. that allowed players to get the benefit, get the sorry, I should explain the Hellfire amulet gives you one of your character's passives while you're wearing it, and it's a random passive that's selected when you craft the amulet. This exploit allowed you to get the passive permanently without continuing to wear the amulet. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty oh. crazy. So what oh. you could do is just keep crafting amulets, get the passive, stop wearing the amulet, and eventually you would have all, all the, the passives? passives for one class. Wow. So wow. yeah, this was uh, particularly good for, I think, like monks, um, demon hunters, <laughs> probably barbs. Some classes' passives are just uh, a bigger part of that class's power than, than their skills or gear. Um and so what you saw is people shooting up in the leaderboards, and when you mouse over them, you can see they have a ton of passives, although it doesn't show all of them. And so really clear right away something's going on. And this, of course, negatively impacts the game because a lot of people are trying to get up in the leaderboards, and if you weren't using this passive, you just really couldn't get up there. Right, you right, compete right. couldn't with people using it. Right, it totally skewed the numbers, obviously. Yeah. And so, uh, first of all, I just want to say, like, don't use exploits. Yeah. Because it's, it's just not worth it, and Blizzard has made it really clear that they plan on taking action against anyone who knowingly uses exploits, um, especially if you're advertising exploits and, you know, if you're going on forums or streaming or making videos about, hey, here, how's it, here's how to do the exploit, and you're, you know, trying to spread the exploit around the server, then Blizzard's not going to like you very much for doing sure. that, and they're probably going to, That's going to be that ban your account or something. Yeah. Which happens all the time. I have, I have a lot of streamer friends with banned accounts because they thought it'd be cool to stream an exploit. Guys, I watched some G.I. Joe when I was younger, and I'm here to tell you, winners never cheat, cheaters never win, knowing is half the battle. <laughs> that, so. yeah. I, I wouldn't say cheaters never win, but in this case... <laughs> cheaters made it pretty damn high up on the leaderboard <laughs> yeah. is what they did. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just not worth the risk. Um, but we had a really interesting conversation about exploits when I was streaming last Friday. And I just thought it would be fun to talk about because um, anytime there's an exploit like this, there's the players that come out and say, well, how are we supposed to know it was an exploit? How are we supposed to know that wasn't intended gameplay and that I was just taking advantage of what the developers put into the code? And um, with this exploit, you'd think it's pretty obvious, but I'm sure there's posts on the forums that sound just like that. But there has been some other exploits in the past that was really... Borderline, and what when, when, when I'm thinking of in particular was uh, there was one in Guild Wars where you could go to one vendor and buy a certain uh, type of material and then sell it to another vendor for a profit. That's a really simplified version of what it was, but I don't want to go into details. Sure. And that one, uh, they decided it was an exploit. It wasn't intended, but it, it was really so ingrained into the game that I wasn't sure if players really should be held responsibility for taking advantage of that. And so I pose the question to anyone who wants to come up with a good definition, at what point is an exploit obviously an exploit and, and should be um, and players should be held responsible for you know taking advantage of it? I don't know. Podcast at blizzpro.com, guys. What do you think about that? Hit us up. Yeah. Hit us up and let us know because everybody's got a different answer. Everybody's got a different idea and... Yeah, so I don't know. What do you think, Reb? Um, you know, honestly, if if it were me and I came across the exploit, I wouldn't have thought it was an exploit. Um, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate right here. Um, I feel like if it if it's <clears throat> operating as such in game and it's what has been executed and put into live, obviously you would know that it's an exploit when it becomes the point that you have seen since the disparity between how you've jumped up in the leaderboards. That maybe is when you start to QM, but honestly those who were initially doing it, I don't think they were entirely in the wrong. They may not have realized it was an exploit. Mm. Mm. Maybe I should give a little more information. I, I, I wasn't going to explain how to do it, but they already have said they're fixing it, and, and the accounts are being punished if they're using it. Maybe just for the sake of the conversation, I'll just go ahead to clarify things. You continue to create the amulet and then equipping it to get the passives until you have all of the passives. Yeah, um, it's a little bit more involved than that. When okay. you wear the amulet until it breaks. 
Okay. And then if you equip it after it's broken, you don't lose the passive. Archon, before the stream started, told us he wasn't going to tell us how to do it. I wasn't it. going to. Yeah, knew. Was, but then I, I knew. realized that You're I kind just, of like made yeah, this conversation we more confusing by not that explaining out of you. it. You didn't have a chance, dude. You didn't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> but don't do it. Like, Don't do it because... You're, they're fixing it if they haven't already fixed it, and um, and you'll be punished. Your account could be banned. Like it's just not worth it. Sure. To the very least, you'll get rolled back. Okay. All right. Well, there you go, guys. So, yeah, those of you who cheat, <laughs> the pinche de no es bueno. So, um, well, let's move into the Hearthstone news. Um, we've got a whole bunch of uh, guys. We're going to be talking about StarCraft, uh, Legacy of the Void stuff, and a lot of Heroes of the Storm stuff coming up too. So stay tuned for that. But let's jump into uh, let's jump into some Hearthstone. What's the new? What's the word on the street? There, Stutter. What's the, what's the good word? What's the news, man? I mean, well, first off, let's just talk about the meta. Okay. The meta is, you know, I mean, you can see some of everything on the ladder depending on the time of day you play. But the general you're going to see is the secrets pally yeah everyone hates it everyone knows it mm -hmm. you're also gonna see the same hunter deck you've seen for a while but this and... time it runs double flare yep lately i've been seeing a lot of uh a lot of new and creative druids that yeah. maybe we'll cover in the future but I, I like that because who doesn't want new you know right. and druid is kind of a class that kind of fell away wayside ever since like everyone's can play zoo yeah which is another deck you will see a lot. Um, but, I mean, the big thing, guys, is Patron Warrior will still is still the best deck. Patron Warrior will win it all if you want it. Not a lot of people can play it well. It takes a lot of practice. There's a lot of trade-offs, and it's like, how do I win the game? A lot of people play to not lose the game. Sure. Play to win the game. Yep. Um, but, yeah, so Patron Warrior can... If you want to counter the meta, Patriot Warrior is the way to go. Like, Armor Smith will take care of any aggro deck. You got Fiery War X for any 3 2 drop that seems to be very popular, such as Knife Juggler. And, uh, I mean, that that's it. You can always toy around with Priest. Priest can always make a deck that will win against certain other decks. So you can make a Priest deck that will always. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just heard a Skype noise that was closed. Oh. Uh -huh. No, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh, um, I'm gone now. Uh -oh. Yeah, so you can always make a priest deck that um, that will be aggro, and you can always make a priest deck that will be control, but it's hard to make a priest deck that will be both consistently. Sure, sure. At that point in time, it comes down to card draw. Yeah. So I mean, but, you know, the meta's new aggro decks, which is exciting because it's mm -hmm. new decks, but mm -hmm. they're still aggro decks most of the time. Mm -hmm. Also, shamans kind of fall in the way, like, yeah, it's not as it, powerful know? as I thought it was going to be, man. Like it made a big old a big old appearance, like right when the right when uh, TGT dropped. But after that, it was just like you don't see it, it can't anymore. Keep up. It can't keep up because you need a totem, right? And people are just like, "Well, I'll just kill the totems," and that's it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to kill the totem, and I'm going to because the totem, the totem affects you offensively. It doesn't affect anything defensively. You yeah. know, I mean, they're they're. You you may have saved yourself four damage, but you you've lost your board, and so if you can't utilize that totem that turn, then you're just hosed. So, mm -hmm. and one of the decks that I've been seeing a little of, but I'm sure is very popular on the ladder, is uh, you know, the mages. Yeah. Right. You got the mech mage, and you also got the mid range mage. That uh, it's just phenomenal. And let's talk about one of the combos actually for the mid range mage. That okay, it's huge. Is a flame walker plus pretty much any spell, guys. Any spell at all, and flame walkers. Waker. Pretty ridiculous. Is it Waker or Walker? Flame Waker. Flame. Waker. Waker. There's I no can't L. Pronounce words. It's okay. <laughs> I would have said Walker um, too if I hadn't gotten called out on it. It makes perfect sense, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but so yeah, you just play any spell and it just does two two random damage to anything. So basically, if you you know frostbolt their face and they have no minions, it's five damage. You know, you frostbolt something and it it clears up one one so well. And that's one of the, like everything has one health these days. All the aggro decks are like I'm just gonna play one health minions and that's yeah. good. Flame Walker, Flame Waker, <laughs> I apologize, can win you any game if you get that bad boy rolling. You know what? It's you know what's funny, dude? That. Have you looked at the flavor text on this? The flavor no. text says Flame Wakers hate being confused for Flame Walkers. 
They just wake up fire. They don't walk on it. Walking on fire is crazy. <laughs> That's what it says. So obviously they knew people were going to be making that mistake. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yep. <laughs> so. Oh. So let's get on to card combo number two. Yes. Yes. So we'll stick with the mid-range. Let's go Mana Worm plus any spell. Yeah. Right? Let's stick with the mage thing. Mana Worm plus any spell. Your Mana Worms also can win you any game. That's why Mage is so strong these days. It's Flame Wakers plus Mana Worms. Mana Worms can get out of control so quickly. They've been out of control. They can get out of control since, like, the beginning of the game, you know? You remember, like, turn one, if you have the coin, like, play a Mana Worm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then coin out a Mirror Entity. Or, no, Mirror... Mirror Image. Mirror Image. I mix up those two all the time. Mirror Image. And it just lives. Like, you can't kill it because you got to kill those two, two darn taunts. Yep. Yep. You know, and you just it's follow up with spells play. and you get, like, a 5-3 and they're just like... I could finally kill it, but I'm at like ten health. Yep, yep. There's nothing worse. That's why. That's why when you're when you're playing a mage, you've always got to try and mulligan um, for something to take care of that 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 three health. You know, if you're playing as a mage, obviously you're mulliganing for like your frost bolts. Uh, if you're playing as a warrior, you're you're mulliganing for um, your fiery fiery win, win axe. Yep, fiery win axe. Um, as Raps as a rogue, uh, as a rogue, you're probably you're gonna take one to the face, but you're probably gonna have to backstab it and hit it with your weapon or something like that. So, yeah, maybe even coin uh, if this. <laughs> oh God, that hurts. <laughs> That's a that that would. That's hurt, almost you know, if that if it's if it's behind if it's behind two of the mirror images, then you know if you got four taunts or whatever, then yeah, you're gonna have to coin a this that. But anyways, well, cool, man. Yeah, the the mana worm people. Seriously, that thing can get out of control really easily. So don't be afraid to use it. Yeah, so. and it's just like, like someone in chat goes, Candy Mo goes, mages aren't OP nowadays, and like you're right, mages can definitely be beat, but they're still a good deck, you know. Mm -hmm. They're still an annoying deck to play with. You're gonna see it a lot on the ladder because Flame Wakers and because Mana Worms. Those deck, those cards can win you any game. Hmm. Agreed. Agreed. So, um, uh, we do have somebody in chat who's like. <laughs> I can't see your names. Uh, for those of you listening to this on the download, we've got two separate overlays. Um, one for when we are actually playing or you know showing things in game, and one for uh, when we are demonstrating or when we're just talking. So, um, anyways, the one where it, the, where we're playing the games does not have our names on it. So, anyways, sorry about that. Back to uh, back to the um, back to the deck of the week. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about our deck of the week. Now, this deck of the week is a, is I it's a it's another Savitz deck, guys. And I'm I'm looking at Twitch streams and stuff like that, and it's like I am just finding a lack of originality. And Savitz, for the second week in a row, has come out swinging with something that's just different and just cool, and utilizing cards that aren't used very much. And I watched him play this this deck for probably the better part of an hour and a half, and he did pretty good with it. Um, again, he's a top level player, so he thinks outside the box quite a bit or whatever. Um, but this is called the Casino Mage, and the entire point of the Casino Mage is it's all a gamble of what you're going to get. For those of you who are familiar with like Randuin, um, where everything is just random, you don't know what's going to happen or whatever, this is the same kind of thing except for on the mage side of the house. Uh, and it was really cool because I watched him play this, and he ended up with cards from all sorts of different classes and you know stuff like that. He ended up with like two different weapons at one point, and it was just it was insane the way you know the way he got out of some situations because he had cards he wasn't supposed to have. So um, this is more of a fun deck as far as come or as far as competing on the ladder i don't know it's again it's very random so um that's part of part of the thing that makes it great is because your opponent does not know how to play around this deck because they probably have not seen this deck and they don't know what cards you are getting so pretty cool so stutter why don't we break down this deck um sounds good so we got two mana worms guys and two arcane missiles arcane missiles are strictly to Buff up mana worms plus take care of all those pesky one ones mm -hmm. or two ones or anything with one health. It actually has a fifty percent chance of killing a three two as well, just for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. There was a huge argument way back in the day over that, and it's like no, no it's fifty percent, guys. I promise you. <laughs> uh, then you got 
You got two Frost Bolts because Frost Bolts in every mage deck pretty much. Absolutely. Um, takes care of those three twos guaranteed. Uh, I can also freeze a warrior. Like if you're trying to play around a Patreon turn, you freeze the warrior and you're like, well, you can't death spite your yeah. last charge, you know? Yep. They might equip a fire war axe to get around that, but still. Yeah. It's like an extra two you're, mana. You're you know? putting it's them different. on having to do that. So Mm-hmm. And that's that's not a good play for them. They're not happy about that. Nope. Nope. Um You got two unstable portals. Kind of a little random action. Also buffs the mana worm. Mm -hmm. Also gets the flame wakers going. But unstable portal is one of the most fun cards, and you can win the game. I had a guy unstable portal of rag versus me, and I was just salt. Yeah, <laughs> that's a I five a five salt. mana rag. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And it was just like, oh my god! And it was just like insta concede. I'm done playing for the yep. day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mad scientist, guys. This is as more secrets get into the game. This card is not going away. Yeah, it may never see play in Secrets Paladin because Paladin Secrets only cost one, but in every other Secret deck, it will play a lot, especially in Mage. Right, every Secret is three mana mm -hmm. for Mage, and that's just awesome. Get an Effigy out there, get a um, get a duplicate. It's a duplicate. Um, yeah, and those are Effigy and Duplicate are the only Secrets that are in this deck. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, duplicates actually really good if you duplicate the man or mad scientist too, like because then you get the other secret out there. It's not ideal, but it's it's not bad. And you duplicate anything, it's just free card draw, right? Sure. It's like an arcane intellect, but you know what you're getting. Yeah. So that's always nice. Um, speaking of which, there's one arcane intellect for card draw. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. We got duplicate. We got effigy. Effigy's a lot of fun, actually. It's also a random card. Yeah, right. Effigy, so, uh, just so you guys know, that's one of the newer cards that came out with TGT. Uh, it's a secret, and when a friendly minion dies, summon a random minion with the same cost. For some reason, people are forgetting about Effigy, and they just straight up, you know, um, BGH, Dr. Boom. You know, it's like you drop Dr. Boom, you've got Effigy already played. Uh, they don't. They think it's Ice Block or something like that. And they straight up just rock Doctor Boom out of the out of the park, and it's like, oh, here comes another seven drop. And guys, there's a lot of crazy seven drops that it's like, oh my god, how how did that just land here? Yeah. So, I mean, I, you can FG pretty much anything and be happy about it. Like the three mana, you're like, ah, okay. But like piloted shredder, mm -hmm. that gives you a two, uh, whatever the thing, a two mana cost creature plus. You know, another four mana cross cruiser. Yeah. Maybe even another pile of shredder. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh so we already talked about flame wakers. We don't need there's, to talk about that. Two of them in the deck. Yep. Yeah, two of them. We got Spell Slinger. This is a fun card, guys. Mm -hmm. One of the things with um with uh Mage is you hero power a lot. Like most people don't realize how like there's not many card draw in this deck, so it's like when you run out low and you, you play cards you get the hero power and it's like you're drawing a random spell but it's still a draw you know sure so that's exciting and plus it might give you like a good combo with flame waker i actually think this is one of the most fun cards in the game and i think it's underutilized as well mm -hmm. well but so, the spell slinger it adds a it, it's a battle cry that adds a random spell to each player's hand oh man what was the one i was thinking of where i don't know oh, i don't no, know i, I didn't know where of, you were going uh, with Nexus that one champion thread sorry Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Spell Slinger is also a really fun card. Um, the downside to it is that it adds a random spell to each player's hand. So it's kind of like, I know as soon as I play that, my opponent is going to get the, like, do 30 damage for one mana card, you know, mm -hmm. that's just going to rock me. So it's a, it's a bit of a gamble. But you might give them something, like if you're playing against a priest or something, you might give them, like, a deadly poison or something that just sits in their hand and is useless. So. Yeah, and another thing is if you plan for it, like, you can still play around it better than them, right? Because they're like, oh, man, what am I going to do with this extra card, you know? You're like, well, I know I'm going to get a random spell, but I have a Flame Waker in my hand, mm -hmm. and I just can be ready for that combo all day. Yep. Yep. So we got an Echo of Medivh. Mm -hmm. I can't pronounce that. Medivh, you're right. Medivh. <laughs> Exodus. Medivh, yeah. Medivh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Medivh. Oh. Just one like of those. Terrible, terrible name. Oh. <laughs> so... It's just, you know, it allows you to play all the fun cards again, right? Yep. So you can play Mad Scientist, you can, you really, like, or you can play the Spell Slinger, you can do, a, you know, Paladin Shredders are really good to do. Mm -hmm. If you Echo of Medivh, like, a, you know, 
Sylvanas or a Sludge Belcher, even if it's just the only thing on board, it's still pretty good. Absolutely. Um, or, like with Effigy, if Effigy drops something really good, you know, you can Echo of Medivh and get everything on the board, including what the Effigy just just dropped, and yeah. you play it again, you know? So, there's a lot of value in that. Yeah. Get another Flame Waker, right? Maybe sure. you have four out there. Yep. That'd be amazing. I would be so salty if that happened against me. It happens. Every day. <laughs> oh. So, we got a, we got a Fireball. It's, yep. I'm... Only one, guys. I know I've always been a strict thing if you always put two fireballs in your deck, but only one because this has just been filled with... It's like a more of a minion-based mage. Mm -hmm. So you want to like beat them down. It almost plays like a little... like It plays kind of like Zoo. Sure. Um, but it's, it's beefy. It's a beefy Zoo. So you only have one fireball kind of for that finisher it's also removal mm -hmm. like he made this deck kind of viable instead of just like playing all random guards right right so that's why fireballs in there it makes it a little bit more viable two pilot of treaders adds the randomness plus it's pilot of treaders one of the best four drops in the game if not the best yeah in fact i think it is the best um, because it's just so hard to remove nobody's happy about it you wrath it you get two more you know you frost bolt it you get another two mana cost minion it's just it's obnoxious mm -hmm. but it's so good we got Nexus Champion Thread. This is the one I was talking about earlier. This is one of the most fun cards in the game. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a four five for five, and when you drop it, if you use your hero power while it's on the board, you add a random spell to your hand. So, yeah, it's just it's so much fun. You just start slinging spells over. Oh man, I love it. It's I think it's underutilized, but I also realize that you know it, it's. Definitely, there's so many good five drops these days that it, I don't think it'll make it in the top decks, but it'll be worth playing. It'll be a lot of fun. And that's what Hearthstone's all about, right? Fun? That's what I'm told. That's right. That's and we learned a moral of the story today from Stutter. What's that? What was the moral of the story? What did I learn? It's all about having fun. That's right. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> a terrible person to learn that from. <laughs> 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 Trying to pistol whip kids at a. Uh, Oh yeah, laser we, tag. we don't need to go there. We don't need to go it's there. Fun. <laughs> Anyways, we got two sludge belchers. Yep, awesome card, guys. It's sludge belchers. Yep. N enough said. Uh, one Sylvanas, another great card. Also adds randomness. It's mm -hmm. just you can do a cool little combo with Fireball Sylvanas. You get a mind control. Yep. Um, a random mind control, but most of the time when you're doing that, you kind of know what you're getting. Like they drop you Sarah, you Sylvanas Fireball, and then you you have you Sarah. There you Sarah. Yeah, yep. you have you Sarah. Uh, Flame Strike. Flame Strike is just, it's almost in every mage deck these days. Not yep. the aggro ones, but like the control ones. It, it can win you a game. Mm -hmm. If people overextend, it just wins it too. Uh, it's, then we got after that, we got Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. Dr. Boom. Dr. Dr. Boom. Boom. Yeah. It's just, you know, if you ask me what the best legendary in the game is, it's probably Dr. Boom. Uh, we got Rag. Rag is a lot of fun. Yep. He's also good. He's X, kind of like a Pyroblast in this deck, plus. He can control the board really well. You get rag roll and you win the game. Of course, he's also PGH target, which sucks. But you have Doctor Boom out there to kind of get rid of that BGH, hopefully. Yeah, if you're still playing on curve. Something. Yep. Yep. And then you got Nephron, Nefarian. Yep. Nefarian. Sorry. Where you uh, add two random spells to your hand from your opponent's class. So. Yep. And because you have so many BGH targets in this deck, that it's yeah. it's all right to play these BGH cards cards you know it was it was pretty awesome i did play this deck one time um and i dropped nefarian against a priest and i was top decking and so i dropped nefarian and the priest was at five health and guess what he thought he was really slick because he mind controlled nefarian but guess what i picked up from nefarian mind blast so <laughs> So he takes my Nefari and everything like that and does the whole sorry or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 dude. I'm sorry for you. Here's your Mind Blast. Thanks for the W. So Losing to Mind Blast is like just the, oh. Yep. Yep. So and you're like, oh, man, I finally stabilized. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this, uh, this Casino Mage, we're going to have the, um, we're going to have the, uh, uh, the deck list on blizzpro.com uh, when this article goes up. So um, you guys can you can see the deck list and everything like that uh, one more time. And uh, if you have any questions about it or anything like that, 
reach out to us, uh, podcast at blizzpro.com. We are more than happy um, to uh, to answer any questions. And if you have anything that's like, um, you know, uh, it's, I have a question for, for Archon. I have a question for Reb or whatever. I'm going to send it right to him, guys. So, yeah, we can do that. Um, again, for all your Hearthstone news, deck lists, and meta reports, make sure you guys are visiting hearthstone.blizzpro.com or uh, one of the other BlizzPro Hearthstone podcasts is the Well Met podcast. Um, so you can check that out, too. You can plug that into your headset or plug that into your ears. Plug your headset into your ears. Plug something into somewhere <laughs> and listen to it and have fun. Whoa. So how badly can Twiz screw the pooch on that? <laughs> um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to... I know we talked last week about how, you know, we don't really talk about StarCraft. It's not one of our things that we do. It's, you know, there's another, a whole other community that, that covers that. and They do really, really well with it. Um, but... Uh, I do want to bring I do want to bring up something about uh, StarCraft Two because we had some some pretty pretty big news um, on November tenth. The final expansion, Legacy of the Void, is going to be released, and you are going to get to jump all up in its chili. Uh, I want to bring up just a few things in case you never got into StarCraft uh, or you're kind of on the fence about buying it. Uh, a few BlizzCons ago, it was clearly stated that even if you didn't own Wings of Liberty or Heart of the Swarm, you could pick up Legacy of the Void and be right in the action. Uh, they're actually pretty ecstatic over how new players can just jump straight into this game. Uh, for those of you who have dabbled in it, uh, I, I want to bring up just a few things that they're ho they're doing in Legacy of the Void so you know what you can look forward to. Uh, first and foremost, um, and this is directly named after our show host, uh, there is Archon Mode. True story. <laughs> it's, true st it's, it's all him. Uh, in Archon Mode, you can team up with a friend, and both of you can control one base in order to coordinate, plan, and ultimately take down your enemies. Uh, this is also an awesome way to learn the game, if you have a friend who's into it. That way it's not like Twiz versus Stutter, where Twiz just gets smoked and nothing gets learned or accomplished. But the game's still <laughs> fun, even when that does happen. Um, so I, I think that's cool. I can also see this being one of the things where uh, Stutter's like, oh yeah, Twiz, you and I are on the same team. Yeah, you're doing really good. In the meantime, he's like on the other side of the map just building a fortress. And I'm like, I'm going to put this over here. And you're like, yeah, put that over there. So anyways. Good call, Twiz. Good, good call, call, Twiz. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there are some Heroes of the Storm perks when you purchase Legacy of the Void. You'll be getting a StarCraft Warrior Hero in Heroes of the Storm just for purchasing the game itself. And this hero has not been announced yet, but I have a little bit more on that in the Heroes of the Storm segment, which is coming up in about three and a half minutes. Um, there are six new units in total, two for each race and a bunch of new abilities to the units uh, that you are already familiar with if you've been playing with it. Pre-purchasing Legacy of the Void also gives you access to a special prologue mission, uh, or prologue missions, plural, that introduce you to the Protoss campaign. So um, you can pick up Legacy of the Void, and if you do that, you get into the beta right now if you pre-order it uh, for $39.99. As with other games like WoW, Diablo, and StarCraft, there is always a collector's edition. Okay, the physical box uh, comes with some goodies, and there's a digital deluxe version that comes with the exact same in-game goodies as the physical box comes with. So let's talk about some of those in-game goodies. Um, those include unique portraits and a new Protoss skin uh, in StarCraft. And, um, and you get an Archon pet for World of Warcraft, a Protoss-themed card back for Hearthstone, and a pro pet and Protoss transmog for Diablo 3. Mm -hmm. I said that really weird because I didn't want to just... Sp I, I can see myself spitting all over the mic. <laughs> um, lastly, for you Heroes of the Storm players, uh, you'll receive the Void Speeder Mount, which is uh, 152 Shades of Sexy, if you haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. So uh, these items come from the Digital Deluxe version, which retails at a hefty $59.99. So uh, it's some extra perks, it's some extra goodies, but you know what? It's a fun game, so it's worth uh, it's worth getting into. Um, so that is uh, that is it. We will talk a little bit more about um, uh, about Legacy of the Void as news and stuff comes out. Uh, let's talk Heroes of the Storm, and um, I am super excited about some of the things that are going on here. Some of the changes, some changes have been made in the Nexus, um, and I want to take just a quick second to bring you guys up to speed on how Blizzard is handling people who play like children. And no, I don't mean young kids who are inexperienced mobile players. I'm talking about grown adults that don't know how to behave themselves and act like there's some kind of a million dollar prize for winning a match. So basically like stutter. Um, if that... <laughs> Sorry, I just... Under the bus you go. 
Uh, if that description fits you as a listener, then you may want to listen to what I'm about to say. Uh, with the arrival of the current patch, you'll find that Blizzard has reworked the categories you can select when reporting another player for various types of misconduct. Um, you can uh, report them for abusive chat, which is basically swearing, name-calling, obviously. It's abusive chat. I don't really need to go too in-depth with that. Um, intentional feeding. So basically when a player intentionally or and repeatedly gets their hero killed in order to you know, make your team mad or feed XP to the enemy team, just to be a jerk, um, you can... You can report them for that specific uh, thing. Uh, AFK or non-participation. Um, cheating, botting, or hacking. Um, suspicious behavior, which indicates that the player may be using a third-party software to hack pr- uh, or hack programs to gain an advantage during a game. Uh, if they have an inappropriate name, um, which I see left and right. I mean, it is one of those things. It doesn't bother me. I'm not going to flag anybody over their name unless it's like really, really, really off the wall but um and then there's sex <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> reported no they'd let that one through yeah they're they're like actually that's on the Sorry, preferred Chris. list that's on the preferred list it's honest enough they're allowed to have it <laughs> um and then spam excessively communicating the same phrase similar phrase or pure nonsense blatant or repeated advertising for a third party website so um when stutter when you go in there and you try and uh, promote your tinder two people in game over and over and over again it's gonna get there's a reporting feature for that now stutter so i'm just letting you know man you're gonna have to put it take take it down a notch take it down to like a seven okay um they did introduce a new thing um and i kind of want to pick you guys' brains on this there is the silence penalty that has now uh, been introduced any player who's reported multiple times under the spam or abusive chat categories will after investigation receive a silence penalty while this penalty is active, the silence player will find that their ability to chat with others is greatly limited. Um, silence players, here's what they can and cannot do. Okay, um, Silence players cannot use allied chat in-game, so you can't communicate with, with the rest of your teammates. Um, you, can, you cannot chat in Hero League draft lobbies. You cannot chat in general chat channels. You cannot chat in custom chat channels. And you cannot send whispers to non-friends. Um, here's the things that you can do. You can use party chat when uh, with invited players, so you can still communicate with your uh, your your friends that you invited in party with you. Um, you can create, suggest, and request to join parties. You can send and receive new friend requests. You can send whispers to friends. You can reply to whispers from non-friends, and you can issue in-game pings. Now, here is the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the flaw. The the thing that I think is not going. The thing that takes all this whole system and just flings it off the map. You ready? Here it is. The first time a player is silenced, their chat will be restricted for 24 hours. That is problem number one. Um, The reason being is, let's say I get on... Uh, I get into Heroes of the Storm on Thursday night, and I am just being a douche canoe all over the place, and I get... I think we just call that Thursday night. I think we just call that Thursday night. It's, it's, so I, so here I am on an average Thursday night, and um, I get the silence stick, okay? So Friday night, I go out with my buddies and whatever and, and do whatever. Saturday morning, I sit down with my cup of coffee, and the, the, the idiocracy continues. I went through a 24-hour ban, but it's like, okay, I'm just not going to play for a day. Mm-hmm. What they need to do, the fix for this is, it doesn't need to be 24 hours. It needs to be eight hours of game time. Mm, touche. Eight hours of game time because I can walk away from the game and not play for a day. Okay, I can't, you know, I can't communicate with anybody. Blizzard, the man shut me down, so I need to not be a part of this. Okay, I get that, I get, but that that's not going to be effective. People can walk away from this for a day easily, even two days, because um, the duration will double for each silence penalty received after the first, and there is no maximum. So that means that players who receive multiple silence penalties may find themselves unable to chat for a very, very long time. Now, um, I, I, so okay, so it doubles, but the penalty hurts more when it inhibits them while they're trying to game. If your penalty is inhibiting you when you're not gaming, does it even feel like a penalty? Does it feel like anything even? Does it really? Does it really matter? No. So you got to hit them. 
you, you got to punish them in the arena that they're in, of you know, uh, creating the offense. So my recommendation is that you do eight hours, eight hours of silence in game, and then after that eight hours, if you get it again, boom, you're at sixteen, homeboy. It's gonna be a long while. Sixteen hours of gameplay is is something that would make people think a little bit different. You don't think so? so I'm Red? gonna play devil's advocate right here. No, there's no devil's advocate on the show. Stutter. Red looks like she's ready to play devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. don't agree with you, Toys. So go, I'm go ahead, I'm sorry. okay with the in-game thing, but I gotta be honest. If I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna leave my game playing, and just like in the home screen. I think he and means I'm just like gonna walk game. away, like mean, playing in-game. In game. Yep, because you know what? Like An average game actions? average game is what? 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. So let's for round numbers sake, let's say half an hour. So that means so then, you would have to play at two games per hour, eight hours. That's you have to play 16 games in the corner. And I mean whatever, that's at eight hours. That that might be a little excessive. Yeah. Maybe four ga- four hours. Yeah. Would be eight games. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or you something. You could just do games, right? You could just say, okay, well, you can't do this for any games. Like if you if it lasts ten minutes, like oh well, well you got lucky. Oh, that's true. No. Yeah, they could do it by the game. They could say you know for the next four games you're in the penalty booth. Yeah, yeah. Because if you do it by hours, then people are gonna be like, well, I prolong this game, you know, so I can talk in the next one or whatever like that. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. See, here's why I don't agree with you, Twiz. Is what if you are generally not a toxic player and you have had one moment of just you know you've had it you've had it all your four randos are just doing whatever the heck they want to do and you fall into a place where you become a toxic player and you're like holy crap i can't believe i just did that it's really not in my nature to do it but i've done it once and then you get reported Uh, to have to suffer through the eight hour penalty when you're a first time offender but and have what you're forgetting, my dear, is there is um, there is a uh, there are two words in here that that would prevent that from happening. If you just if you just had if you just got pushed too far and you just lost your crap, okay? There's two words in here that kind of might save your bacon, and it's called after investigation. After investigation, if you have been playing this game for so long and you've never been reported at all. And then one time you lose it and you just go, you just go postal and, you know, I mean, everything's flying out, you know, you, your fingers can't type fast enough. Yeah. They would most likely look at it and be like, you know what, A, maybe somebody else was playing that. Maybe his, maybe, maybe this person has a kid that was playing it, a younger kid mm-hmm. or whatever. We're going to, we're going to flag this. And if it happens two, three, four more times, if this becomes a trend, then guess what? It's, it's done and over with. But I don't right. think and, one time is and, going and that's to... was going to be another point that I was going to, to going to make is somebody else using your account, maybe a little kid. But it, it's just I, I don't believe in the eight hour thing. I, I think maybe if you progress to that point, but a first time offender should not be penalized to eight hours in game. They should take the twenty four hours. And I think a lot of people who have ever succumbed to that rage and and succumbed to that point of being a toxic player, walking away from the computer for a day it really kind of sets you back into that mindset of, okay, it's just a game. I don't know why I completely lost my bananas over this. Right. And coming back, maybe remedy that situation. That's why I, I kind of feel that, you know, encouraging them to walk away from the situation and not continue to put themselves through uh, through the um, through trying to game mm-hmm. maybe the entire weekend and consistently getting more and more toxic and more and more um, hostile towards the other players yeah well like uh unicorn slayer in the uh, in the chat room says um and they're they're obviously they're, they're playing catch up but they said if you like never rage you're not going to get in trouble for doing it one time and i think overall that's the point that i'm just trying to make with everything so sorry yeah I, and and i can get that but i see that the the reason that blizzard i think is choosing this path I can't speak for them, obviously, but I can understand that getting someone to walk away for a little bit, calm down and think about what they've done rather than trying to play through it Mm -hmm. is a little bit better strategy. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think that's a little ideal. I I think the average person that's going to rage isn't going to feel bad about it. They're going to be like, my teammates sucked and they needed to know it. But 
if I mean, and that's the average. It's not everyone. Everyone's different, of course. And I think Reb's right that some people are just going to have a bad day. But I, I think you know when we're speaking to the masses, uh, they're not they're not going to go and think about what they did. They're not going to take twenty four hours to be like, man, I was really. I was really kind of a jerk the other day. I need to <laughs> calm down. I, I, you know, the average person is going to stop talking crap about people if they have no other choice. Right, right. No, it, I think you're right. I think you're right. So, I don't know. Guys, let, let us know what you think. Podcast at blizzpro.com. I mean, that's that's one of the best ways you can get a hold of us. And let us know what you think. Um, they're they're kind of getting down on me about... Uh, I, I went from eight hours to four games... <laughs> You're not much of a haggler, Twiz. I know. I'm just. This is all theoretical. <laughs> I told you, Twiz. I think it should be 20 minutes. 20 minutes at most. Half of a game. Half the first game. half of the next yeah. game. Like the, until you when you pick your level one talent, then you're yeah. you're good. Okay. The so. next thing they type doesn't go through. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, one of the things that I do want to do is um, I kind of want to go through Rexar. Rexar is one of the newest. Um, one of the new hero, the newest hero that got introduced. Um to Heroes of the Storm. Um, there are some people who are a little on the fence about maybe buying him or they don't know much about him. Um, he's kind of like, I, I thought he was a little underwhelming and Stutter, Stutter actually brought up the fact that he was introduced to the game with 14 different bugs. And I'm not talking like lice. I'm talking like like bugs, no crap. There's things that are wrong with Rexar. So you want to touch on some of the highlights of those there, Stutter? I mean, he doesn't the hunter gathering talent bug like there's just like a bug that I, I don't know exactly all the stuff about it but i know between misha misha has a problem collecting gems mm -hmm. i know that misha also has a problem with her hitbox like enemies can't body block by using her while our hero is body blocked by misha so it's like a weird little thing but it's sure also kind of thing the wildfire bear doesn't or bear talent doesn't affect the blackheart bay's box you know, the coin box. Uh, there's a Misha targeting bug that follows Rexar while attacking, even if she has an aggressive stance. Um, after Stitches hooks Rexar, the space the space key camera locks on a Misha, not Rexar. Mm -hmm. um, Abathar's evolution, if you kill off the original Rexar, then I believe the... Uh, or, not the original Rexar. Yeah, the original Rex are. Then Misha stays alive. Sorry, I, I got mixed up there. If you, when you are entangled by a boss, you just use E. The entangled disappears for no apparent reason. Misha doesn't heal after Hearthing, mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Um, when Misha uses W, her targeting disappears. Uh, when Misha's AI, but <laughs> Misha cannot handle walking at forked ways. Oh yeah. So like she'll go like the opposite way of Rexar sometimes. It's like she gets confused. Mm -hmm. I understand that. When I walk up to a fork on the road, I get confused. So we well, don't we all <laughs> choices. Yeah. Are hard. Don't we all? Well, you know, know what? The bottom line is there's a whole bunch of bugs yeah. with this that they're probably going to end up hot fixing. So um, I'm going to give you guys just a really quick breakdown and a kind of a siege build uh, for Rexar. Now, like I told you guys in the beginning of the show, if you want to kill Rexar, or if you want to, if you want to. You basically you kill Rexar. You don't try and kill Misha and then kill Rexar while Misha's on the countdown or Misha or however you want to pronounce it. Somebody was really in my chili about how I pronounced <laughs> Misha before, but whatever. Um, but uh, Rexar very squishy, so just ignore Misha. If you can burn down Rexar, do it because then you just solve both problems at once. So um, this is is going to be kind of like a uh, kind of a siege build depending on the map. Uh, see what you want to go with. Now, I did this this build on Heroes of the Storm Power Hour the other night. Seemed to work out fairly decently. Um, so give it a whirl. See what you want. I don't know if there's quote a a standard build, a cookie cutter build or whatever. Um, but this is what I use, and it kind of worked out pretty well. Uh, you've got your QWE. You've got a Spirit Swoop, which just launches a bird, um, and you deal 48 damage, uh, and you slow the enemy by 30 percent for two seconds. Um, your W control, now, now you control your Q, your W controls Misha. So it's a Misha charge. Um, it, Misha charges in a line dealing 30 damage and stuns the enemy for 1.25 seconds. Uh, again, I thought I timed it at 1.26, but I could have been a little off. Um, and then the E is mend pet. You heal Misha for 120 health over five seconds. So, um, Q is for you, W is for Misha and E is for Misha. 
uh, you've got your two ultimate abilities, your Unleash the Boars, where uh, it's basically the videos that I've seen. If you're if your opponent's team is trying to run away or you're trying to chase somebody down, you can unleash these boars that will hunt them down and uh, slow them by 40% for five seconds. So it basically prevents a team from getting away. Eh. Um, the one that most people go with is Bestial Wrath, where you increase Misha's uh, basic attack damage by 150% for 12 seconds. Uh, pretty, pretty, you know, pretty substantial because you just you hit it and everything she's doing is just rocking out. Um, the talent build that we decided to go with, um, and this was kind of a cumulative um, uh, build on the the Heroes of the Storm Power Hour. Uh, we went with Survivalist Training, which regeneration globes restore 100%. Um, or no, we went Hunter Gatherer. That's what we did. Um, collecting regen globes permanently increases the health regen of you and Misha by one per second. Um, for level four, we went with uh, 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 easy prey. Uh, increases Misha dam increases Misha's damage to minions and mercenaries by 150 percent, and reduces the damage Misha takes from minions and mercenaries by 50 percent. That is excellent for clearing waves. Clearing waves keeps you in the XP race. Um, and it just allows you, um, uh, to solo merc camps and stuff like that very efficiently because not only are you doing 150% increased damage, but you are also taking 50% less damage from them. Um, at level seven, we went bird of prey, which increases spirit swoop damage by 300% to non-heroic enemies. You can push, I mean, you can just mow down a low, uh, line of minions. Uh, this again helps you taking over Merc camps. You can actually darn near solo boss um, around level ten. So um, Bird of Prey is 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 definitely it's it's helping map control throughout the entire game. Uh, ten we talked about unleash the boars and bestial wrath. I think bestial wrath is where it's at. That's just me though. Um, for thirteen, um, thrill the hunt. Uh, it's it's kind of a toss up. You've got thrill the hunt where your basic attacks increase both you and Misha's movement speed by twenty five percent for two seconds. Uh, but then there's also um, bark skin where Misha takes fifty percent less damage from abilities for five seconds after using Misha charge. One of the things to stay away from, or actually wildfire bear is also not bad. Uh, it's the burning rage for Misha. She does twelve damage per second to nearby enemies, um, and that's just a passive that just happens anywhere she's at. She's doing twelve damage to anybody in the area. Um, bear necessities where you can cast uh, Misha charge twice if you don't hit a hero. Don't go with that, guys. Uh, it's a skill shot. It's supposed to be meant. To, it's meant to be a skill shot to begin with. So treat it as such. Um, there's there's just there's better picks. Don't try and go for the free one because you screwed up the first time. Um, for level sixteen, we were going with feign death, and it proved to be fairly useless. We thought it was going to be something really, really good, and it ended up not. So I would say perhaps um, uh, either Primal Intimidation, where enemies that basic attacks, uh, you or Misha have their attack speed slowed by 40%. Um, I think that's pretty good. And also Aspect of the Hawk, uh, where your Spirit Swoop hits an enemy... Uh, you gain 100% attack speed for three seconds. I think there's a lot of value in that as well. So see how the match is going and where you want to go from there. Um, at level 20, you you can do one of two things. Hardened skin is actually pretty awesome. You and me should take 75% less damage for four seconds. At that point in time, guys, you're in the end game. Okay, you're in the end game, and people, are, you're going to hit your final team fight, which is almost going to decide the match, and... And when everybody's blowing their alts and blowing their cooldowns and everything like that, using hardened skin to take 75% less damage for four seconds, which is an eternity in this game, um, you th that it's that will help you survive and stay out on top. Um, I see Varlot Vorlot boy says feign death is awesome. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Here's the th okay. I really don't want to be banned here, but I don't think Twiz knows what he's talking about. Dude, the thing's been out for a week. Okay, so there, nobody knows what they're talking about when it comes to Rexar. Plus, he's got 14 bugs. But also, um, the matches that I played, never once did Feign Death do anything for me. Never once was I like, holy snot. Thank God I grabbed Feign Death. <laughs> I, mean, I can see two cases where you grab Feign Death. Against a Nova who picks Triple Tap and against a Pyroblast. Right, because it cancels it? What's that? Oh, Feign Death? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I again was yeah, never in a position where I was like, "Oh, thank God for Fain Death." Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know anything else about Rexar, but I know if it acts like an ice block, it just cancels those ults immediately, and then sure. you get really happy because any time a power blast just disappears on screen, you're like, hey, yeah, that was awesome. Well, now, uh, and and chat's bringing up a really good point. They're saying that basically, feign death is is an ice block, um, and I can see the value in that. Uh, again, though, I was just never put into a position. I mean, I. I suppose if it's one of those things where you're just about picked off and your team is turning on the other team, you can use that and, you know, and and they're not going to get the pick on you and you have a chance to, you know, because you can still control Misha um, during that. But it's situational. I'm not sitting here telling you feign death is garbage. I'm saying that I didn't have any good luck with it. I didn't have a reason to use it. So, But if you do, then go for it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. That's the beauty of Heroes of the Storm. The only thing that you can really screw up on is Bare Necessities, where you take the uh, <laughs> you take the free cast of Misha Charge because you sucked it up the first time. So um, that's the only one I'm saying, like, don't take that. You just shouldn't take that. But anything else, that's the beauty of it. You can play the, you can play the heroes how you want um, and adapt them to your play style. So, um, so that was the build that we went with. Um, and I think there should be, uh, Rexar is just a little, a little underwhelming, but, uh, again, if you guys want to beat Rexar, you kill Rexar, not Misha. And that is, um, yeah, knowing is half the battle right there. So, you know, um, you saying that Rexar kind of came across as a little bit underwhelming. It makes me wonder if, um, maybe the, the, the heroes community could do kind of like what Diablo did at one point where they did like a design a legendary. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could design certain abilities for a hero that's coming out. I think that would be a really cool idea. What do you guys think? I, I'm a fan of that. I, I can see them laying that down. I mean, obviously it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I thought it was pretty cool when uh, they actually designed the Diablo legendary to do that. So I think translating that over and like kind of consulting on an ability and, you know, what are you guys looking for versus what's not. And, you know, it was now that I'm thinking about the design, of the legendary from Diablo, looking back at some of these legendary items in Diablo, they look mm -hmm. really intricate and specific. Absolutely. And I'm sure there's got to be some cool concepts that really didn't cut make the cut, right? Oh, you better believe there are, Reb. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the following items hit the chopping block as soon as they were named. The stats didn't matter. They got the axe. Off we go. The top 10 Diablo legendary items that were cut before they had a chance. Ringing in at number 10, the toilet paper roll of a thousand wipes. I would have used it once and pitched it anyways. Number nine, Tyriel's Air Jordan boots. And you guys thought he could actually fly. Ha <laughs> ha, joke's Number eight, you. oh sorry, the Nephilim necklace of phlegm. Seriously, who wants a loogie around their neck? True that. <laughs> Number seven, the, pa the fanny pack of doom. The epicness of killing demons is completely lost while being done with a fanny pack on. The fanny pack. Nice. They're not I'm imagining impressive. like some guy walking around, you know, Disney World <laughs> fanny pack <laughs> trying to play Diablo. Number six, Deckard Kane's handicap parking sticker. Let's face it, until mounts come out in Diablo, that's a no-go item. Mm -hmm. The number five Diablo legendary that was cut before it had a chance, the wooded multi-person sitting tool. Okay, let's be honest, nobody wants to carry around a park bench, even if it is a legendary item. Number four, the jock strap of insanity. Let's just say it was less than appealing, especially for all those male barbarians out there. True that. Number three, Donald Trump's Herodric Hairspray. That type of legendary is obviously capable of some amazing things. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, the urinal cake of destruction. I'll be honest, I have no idea where that got cut. I got no idea either. None at all. And the number one Diablo legendary item that was cut before it had a chance, the Wheel of Fortune. It actually made it further than the rest of the other legendaries, but the developers didn't want Pat Sajak selling vowels to come across as a gold sink. It is what it is. It is what it is. So. Today, we salute you, Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man. Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man. You dare dream of a world where the fire animation is something you can easily walk out of. Get out of the fire. 
you boldly embark on quests that take four times as long. I don't know if I'm still in combat. And one day, you'll actually be able to see your bobber dip when you fish. I don't know if I should click now. And Moonguard will no longer kick you due to FPS problems. Mail not up looking for fun. So here's to you, Mr. Salton of Suck. DoghouseSystems.com can build you a rig and put you back in the game with the rest of us. You deserve it, your raid team and arena team deserve it, and so do the rest of us. Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man! Go to DoghouseSystems.com and use the coupon code TWIZ at checkout to double your memory. TWIZCast would also like to remind you to game responsibly. This is Ryan Winson of Upheaval Arts, lead developer on StarCraft Universe, and you are listening to TwizCast. Okay, let's get into some emails, guys. We have emails. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, podcast at blizzpro.com. Feel free to drop us a line and uh, give us your thoughts on anything. We're more than happy to read them on the air. Um, I did get a tweet earlier this week from a Jason F., and um, he was like, hey, can you can you give me a follow and I, I, I want to DM you some, you know, a question or whatever. And it, we, we were kind of going back and forth and I was like, dude, why don't you put this in an email? Because this is, this is something. And he's like, yeah, I could totally do it. Cause 140 characters just isn't enough to get my point across here. So this is, this was, um, this was the email that resulted from that. He says, Hey twiz, uh, Jason here from Twitter writing about heroes of the storm, by the way, would be great to add you in game. Um, yeah, the Twitter messages are weak with only being able to write a few words before space runs out. What I was trying to say uh, about bots in Heroes of the Storm, I was on last night and went on a serious losing streak. Lots of bad luck, whether it was bad drafts, poor team chemistry, or lack of communication or unity. However, a couple of these games, uh, there were players that you could you could tell were acting odd. One example was a Kael'thas who kept suiciding with ridiculously terrible numbers for stats. I mean, he was 0-10 with about 1,000, if that, damage to heroes. He was clearly off doing his own thing in that part of the group. Very suspicious. Even when a player drops, the, co the computer that takes over is way better than this. The other game was a Malfurion that had 5k heals by the end of the game. Unless you were, n you were next to him in the lane, he wouldn't take part of, of being in the group. He did not respond when people asked him to do something or when, uh, or when we insulted him. Again, very odd. I've also been in a game over the week when Murky uh, was also on a suicide mission, not attacking heroes and just going for structures. It's the suspicious activity that leads me to believe that there are more bots appearing with the sole purpose of getting uh, XP and gold. Just my two cents and something worth talking about on your show. Say hi to the guys uh, and love the shows. Missing Hearthstone Power Hour but can totally understand why you lost interest. Felt the exact same way. TGT has helped nerf Hunter to a certain degree. Cheers, bro. Jason F. So basically, Jason's running into like just players who are acting very odd, lack of communication, not doing their job, horrible numbers. It feels like bots that are just there to gain gold and XP and stuff like that. Stutter, does this sound like something that rings a bell with you? I've never heard of, of Heroes bots, but apparently it's a thing. Heroes bots. I, I've I've played with a few Hero bots in the day. I don't see it so much in Hero League, um, but. I definitely see it in uh, against computers, right? Mm -hmm. Against so, the AI. Against the AI. That's a. It seems, I would say, at least one bot per game, with me. But really? I don't play AI that often. So, but you just kind of go and you, they just do their thing. And against bots, you can usually carry, right? Yeah. Because you're already playing bots and you have a bot. You're like, well, I'll just carry. Right. But like, you know, if you're seeing that in Hero League, that's a big problem, to be honest, because it, it's like a guaranteed loss. You're playing with a basically a useless player yeah you know i actually i think i experienced my first couple of bots this past weekend i didn't have any sort of experience and i was playing a really quick match in like a, a beginner ai to knock out a quest and one of my friends was with me and we noted that we had a king uh Leoric on our team and that he decided to go past both walls and simply just like attack core and he was repeatedly dying and rezzing and just attacking the core and obviously wouldn't do anything like wouldn't move from the spot wouldn't do any extra abilities literally just sat on his I, I'm assuming sat on his hands uh -huh. <laughs> this was a Leoric <laughs> you said other choice words um, <laughs> this was a Leoric you said 
Yeah, a Leoric. That was actually and that was a cheesy strategy that was that was kind of exploited by one of the Twitch streamers where you push down you push down an entire lane and then you have Leoric go in there and just keep pushing the core and pushing the core and pushing the core even though he dies. And what he does is he 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 goes through a a build where um, he buffs up his survivability so that way he can still do more damage to the core. Um, mm -hmm. but it was exploiting the fact that he doesn't have to go back to the beginning when he dies. He can stay where he's at. But still, to have no response and then to feed the computers all that experience where it was actually a little bit more challenging than just face roll, it was just... And, and not responding to us. It was just very weird. And then um, I was doing a match today where they started accusing someone of being a bot and they wouldn't respond either. And so I thought, I thought that was kind of the strange behavior when, you know, they're kind of sucking and doing their own thing and then they don't respond to anything. Right. Specifically calling them out. I mean, I think that botting is starting to become a real issue since it's becoming pretty apparent. Yeah. I, I mean, one of the big things with botting, right, is you have to... All the quests are you have to win, if I remember right. Most of them are you have to win the game. So Except for play won't... eight games. No, wait. Yeah, no. play eight games. No, there's play two games as a Diablo hero. Play or play two games as a I thought I thought it was win two games. No, uh uh. No, it's just play two games as a specialist or play two games as a you know, whatever. Okay. So <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. i I just you know when I'm playing heroes like I look at, I don't really, I don't know, that's, I guess maybe this is why it's so new to me, is the fact that it's like, I'm just in my own world, where I'm, you know, pushing a lane, or I'm looking at who's where, and trying to split, or peel off, or do whatever, you know, or try and get the objective, and, you know, when we lose, I look at the Vala that did 3k damage the entire game, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I figured, that's why we lost the game, the, the, bot thing never really crossed my mind or maybe i just never saw anybody stand out that sucked that bad probably because i'm the one that sucks the most but i don't know uh, <laughs> you I mean, just thought that they were a make-a-wish yeah. child or something oh rab <laughs> ouch ouch one of the one of the I other things that, is the, that child yeah <laughs> one of the other things is the tutorial teaches people to lane like just lane all day right the tutorial when you first play you're like oh i just gotta sit here and lane i'll just push all day yeah and it's like well that's you might that's also be part playing of it. with new players who just don't no, to leave lane. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, if you guys have experienced bots or anything like that, hit us up, podcast at blisspro.com, or you can hit up any of us on Twitter um, and and let us know. I, I didn't know it was an issue, but apparently, yeah, the <laughs> chat room is saying, um, you know, it's bots have been here since alpha and, you know, whatever. So um, news to me, it's something that I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye out more for. And I'm glad that he, uh, I'm glad that he did that. I really don't think that bots in this game are going to be super lucrative. I don't think you're going to come home and be like, Oh man, I got 20,000 gold today just by botting. No, you're not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so it's, it's not the Hearthstone bots guys. No, it's not the Hearthstone <laughs> bots. So anyways, um, so yeah, feel free to, uh, to hit us up. Anybody listening to this, uh, podcast at blizzpro.com. Uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's go through real quick. Um, let's go through some iTunes reviews, guys. Five star iTunes reviews really help put us on the map. Um, you just go to iTunes, you type in Twizcast, you download, you listen, you enjoy, you give us a five star review, and uh, let's get some music going for this uh, for this guy. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. Um, so the very first five star review that we got is from a uh, good friend, good friend of the family here, Belrog fan BP. Uh, he says, I'm so glad that this show is back. I can get my weekly Blizzard fix all in one place. Everyone gets so well, or everyone gels so well together, and I can't wait to see more. Thank you, Twiz. Um, Rodimus says, I am so glad to see that the show is back. I missed it and now feel completed again. Uh, also, Joe Boo's mom is not prepared. Uh, the last one we have is from Bog Bars, who says, Great show. In short, this podcast has great personalities and hosts who know what they're talking about. Definitely worth a listen. And uh, so for that, my, my friends, we certainly thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, it is absolutely appreciated what you guys do. So um, I, as uh, in case you didn't notice, this is available on iTunes. Uh, this video portion is going to be on the Blizz Pro YouTube channel right after we get done with the show here tonight. So um, I would want to give one uh, one big thank you uh, to everybody who, has, who, who helps continue the show uh, to be on the air. 
and um, uh, and help bring this podcast back. You, as a listener, you as a viewer, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, it means the world to us. Um, one more one more time for our Patreon account, patreon.com slash twizcast. Uh, when we reach our $500 mark and every $500 increment um, from there, we are giving that $500 or $1,000 or whatever it is that we get back to a random patron. So um, it's how we do. We, we support those who support us. So it's one of the greatest things that that, uh, that you could do is wake up and just, I got 500 bucks in my pocket that I didn't have yesterday. Um, all from supporting a show that has Blizzard news that I enjoy listening to. Um, so, uh, guys, we are going to be back uh, next Monday night at um, uh, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on twitch.tv slash blizzpro. Uh, Archon, do you have anything that you want to say to the masses before we are off and up out? And also, I'm sorry, don't forget we have after hours after this. Those of you in yeah. the chat room, hang out. It's going to get rowdy. Stick around. Those 500 of you in the chat room. Yes. There's wow. 500, pe- 500 people in the chat room right now, 510. Thank you, guys. That's so yes. awesome that you guys came to hang out. I think we have a lot of first-time listeners here right now. I'm very happy. So thank you to you, and may all of your legendaries roll ancient. I like it. I like it. How about you, Reb? Yes, I'll keep it simple. By fire be fabulous, Reb Neros has spoken. As always. And how about you, Stutter? Guys, I'm going pro on laser tag. Peace. <laughs> I am a fan. So, uh, guys, again, thank you so much for what you guys do. And uh, um, until next week, get everybody game safe, love one another, and please, everybody within the sound of my voice, take care. See ya.